When the Lord saw the sisters of Lazarus weeping at the tomb, he wept before the Jews and called out, Lazarus, come out, and Lazarus, who had been dead for four days, came out bound hand and foot. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. When the Lord saw the sisters of Lazarus weeping at the tomb, he wept before the Jews and called out, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus, who had been dead for four days, came out bound hand and foot. Morning prayer right one will begin with the confession on page 41. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgiveness. Though we have rebelled against him, neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws which he set before us. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hand, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws, and we have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent. According to thy promises, declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouths shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him.
are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth and with righteousness to judge the world and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Stand and read responsibly Psalm 130, found on page 784 in the Book of Common Prayer. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him, in his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchman for the morning, more than watchman for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live, and I will lay sinews on you and cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed art thou for the name of thy majesty. 
blessed art thou in the temple of thy holiness, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou that beholdest the depths and dwellest between the cherubim, praised and exalted above all Blessed art thou on the glorious throne of thy kingdom, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the firmament of heaven, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou, O Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, praised and exalted above all forever. A reading from Paul's letters to the Romans. To set the mind on flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, indeed it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the Gospel according to John. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill, so the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let's go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going to go there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. But I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, 
and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. I preach you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, friends, you may have noticed that I did a very quick costume change. I am actually filming this on Wednesday, and I realized that our wonderful Carrie Zimmer is still uh, repairing our purple stole, so I don't have any vestments to wear. And then, unlike last week, I actually have a congregation to preach to. I have John Sweezy, who's our usher this morning, Peanut, Vanilla Bean, and Garbanzo with us as well, who are our congregation. And then, so, this week's gospel lesson is the famous narrative of Jesus bringing his friend Lazarus back to life. And it's so quintessential, it's so filled with humanity, divinity, and compassion, and it it often serves as an example of how Jesus can help us connect with our emotions when we lose a loved one. And then it's also filled with a lot of interesting theology. And then Lazarus is unique among humanity in that he actually died to deaths, that though Christ conquered death for all, um, and that he did bring Lazarus back to life. Lazarus still had to die again in order to be resurrected on the last day. And then for us, that should be a sign of hope, that Lazarus coming back to life can be a foretaste of what we are to expect. And then I'm going to show you a quick, sh- a quick shot of my dogs real quick, if I can turn this camera around, or I'm just going to literally turn it around. So there's Peanut, Garbanzo, and Vanilla Beans right here. And then so before we had Andrew, we had all three of those dogs. First we had Bean, then Peanut, and then Garbanzo. And we have gotten extraordinarily unlucky when it comes to the health of our dogs, but we have gotten extraordinarily, extraordinarily lucky and the temperament and personality of our dogs. And so we love them all so very much. Bean is the compassionate athlete. Garbanzo is the dog that our son, he can pull on her ears as much as he wants, and she barely even grumbles. She's the dog that I take to read to the Boys and Girls Club because I know that she's just going to be as uh, even-mannered as possible around them. And then Peanut is the alpha, even though she is the most physically inept dog that you have ever met. Um, And we actually found out that that's because she has a damaged cerebellum, that she is all wonky. And all of them have interesting pasts. Um, Bean has experienced some form of abuse, and she has weird mannerisms where she doesn't like men holding sticks. And whenever a man raises his voice, whether he's telling a joke or whatnot to a woman, you'll get it in between the woman and the man and then kind of separate the man from the woman. And then Peanut has literal scars around her neck. They had to do surgery um, when she was taken from a family that was abusive to her. And then it was about a year ago, I went to a funeral and there was a eulogy where the son of the woman who died, um, he said that his mother always said that the child that she loved the most was the one that needed her the most in that moment. And for us, when it comes to our dogs, it's, it's very much that. Um, with all of their physical and emotional problems that they've had and all of their wondrous love, we've had to go above and beyond for each one independently. With Garbon- Garbanzo has epilepsy. So we've had to learn how to give her seizure medicine, which is not fun to give to a dog, by the way. And then Bean has had an ACL repaired. Peanut, you may have remembered, Peanut Peanut almost died when she ate a corn cob. And we've spent nights in the doggy ER with pretty much all of our dogs. And in the moment when one of your dogs, especially when Peanut almost died, um, it's just the love you feel for them is so overwhelming. And what we see time and time again, both in humanity all around us currently, as well within Scripture, that when really the rubber hits the road, people respond to pain and suffering in one of two different ways. Either we try to distance ourselves from the suffering, we try to separate ourselves from it, we try to pretend like it doesn't exist, 
or we say that for some reason those people deserve the pain and suffering that they're receiving, or the opposite can be true as well, where some people follow in the steps of Christ who wept at the tomb of his friend Lazarus, and then out of his divine power and compassion brought him back to life because life is innately good. We see countless of Christians that have walked before us that tried to respond to compassion and mercy in situations where people were trying to get out as quickly as possible. The Christian perspective is always to love the people that need us the most. And as I am preaching this, David Cole and Lee Probst are packing up literally hundreds of to-go boxes worth of food. And the people that will come to our church to pick up those meals to take them home and eat. They're not the people that are already full. They're the people that are hungry, that are stretched thin economically. They're the people who this, uh, that will be truly hurt and stretched thin by this economic downturn. They may even be the ones most affected by COVID-19 uh, if and when it comes to Martinsville. And then when we try to show compassion and that Christian love to our neighbors, we need to remember that we are called to the ones that need us the most. That we need to be like Christ, going out to the people who are mourning, the people who are sick, and even to the dead and to honor them. And then in this case, we're in a unique place in the world where sometimes being distant is the best way to show compassion. But we also live in an interesting conflux uh, or a confluence of events. We can also um, be present symbolically or digitally and all of these things. This is a time when we can actually use Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and even TikTok for good. We can show forth compassion in those ways. And we can very carefully orchestrate giving people what they need to not only survive but to thrive in these trying times which is like what we're doing at Loaves and Fishes tonight. And I hope that when you watch this, we'll be talking about how great Loaves and Fishes was and it's going to go off without a hitch. And then maybe we'll even talk about doing it more often. And then we need to be creative and we need to be compassionate. And above all in these times, we need to be faithful. Constantly look for times to show um, compassion and love in the world. Amen. Let us say together the Apostles' Creed found on page 53. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. With our spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. And do thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let the way be known upon the earth. Thy saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. 
Create in us clean hearts, O oh God. And sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. O oh, Almighty God, who alone canst order the unruly wills and affections of sinful men, grant unto thy people that they may love the thing which thou commandest, and desire that which thou dost promise, that so among the sundry and manifold changes of the world our, hates may, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, who makest us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of thy Son, our Lord, grant us this day such blessing through our worship of thee, that the days to come may be spent in thy favor through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of thy faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplication and prayers which we offer before thee for all members of thy holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and godly serve thee through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray for our own needs and the needs of others. Let us pray especially for Lou, Julia, Scott, Marie, George, Pam, John, Hilda, Billy and Marcy, Missy, Mike, Sarah, Jane, Larry, David, Pete, Raul, Crystal, Rusty, Cecilia, Darlene, Sharon, Eula, Jesse, Kathy, Ron, Carolia, Kathy, Bob, Pat, Catherine, Linda, Jim, Tammy, Mallory, James, Rocky, John, Sierra, Catherine, Mary Ruth, Melissa, Alzina, Kristen, and Adam. Are there others? We'll now conclude with the general thanksgiving found on page 58. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, Give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeigningly thankful, and that we may show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, 
by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. friends, life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us for worship this Sunday morning. And then, so there's no real spot for announcements uh, within our morning prayer service. So I thought I would just alert you to a couple of things. Uh, the first is, is that unfortunately, we're not going to be able to have our normal Holy Week and Easter Tide services. Um, however, we will have digital worship uh, with services that will look much like this for Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday. As much as it pains me not to have our worship in person, this is clearly the best thing to do for the health of our community. And then also, uh, there's tremendous need in our community right now. This whole crisis has put a strain on our community, and so we're going to be offering our loaves and fishes meal in a to-go drive-through sort of style every Wednesday beginning at 5:30. If you'd like to donate something, uh, to that great ministry, uh, please let David Cole or myself know, and we will glad to have you help. And then also, um, as much as I love doing these services, um, we are missing a very real sense of community. Not being able to physically get together is something that is almost impossible to replicate. So what we are going to start doing is we're going to have digital coffee hours on the Zoom app on 9.30 every single Sunday. Our first one was this Sunday morning. I hope it went well. It's currently Friday when I'm filming this, so I don't know. Um, but every Sunday while we are sort of quarantined, you can join us uh, for Digital Coffee Hour at 9.30. And there's one more very important announcement from our own Trippy, uh, Trippy Pen. Take it away, Trippy. I have grocery cards. Yes, Trippy Penn has grocery cards, as he does every day. And then he will even deliver them to your house. And then this is the easiest and best way to support your church. Buy a $50 gift card to Food Lion, you get $50 worth of groceries, and the church gets a little bonus. Well, my friends, be safe, stay compassionate, and stay faithful. Godspeed.